Good morning YouTube, this is Chris Green at Outdoor Power Tech. Today we're going to be going over uh, this thermostat controlled choke on this um, Briggs & Stratton 8.50 190cc overhead valve engine. This motor is off of a pressure washer and uh, this particular one is the choke is ran from a thermostat that's hooked to the muffler and uh, the reason you might be wanting to check this out is if you don't went through your carburetor and cleaned everything out on it and you know it's good or if you have replaced it with a new carburetor and it still won't crank like if you have to spray some ether or something in the carburetor and it will fire up and run just fine then you might be having an issue with the automatic choke so we're going to go through the process of removing this and putting it back on this is a fairly new motor so I'm just going to put the one back on it that is on it but I'm going to show you how to do it and some things to look for some of the tools you're going to need is you're going to need a hammer a straight screwdriver a ratchet with 5 sixteenths and a half inch. On these particular motors they went up to a half inch on the bolts a half inch head on the bolts for the muffler. It used to be 7 sixteenths but now they are a half inch. So let's get started. First we're going to start by removing the cover on the top here. And you'll have three You'll have three of these bolts. There'll be one on the back here. And then one right here. Let me set those two to the side. Don't lose them. And then you just pull the cover straight up. If it's hard to, if it feels like it's hard to get off or it's hanging on something, just pull on your recoil pole right here, and you know, it should pop loose. All right, now since we have un uncovered that, you can get a clear view to your thermostat. And that's it right there. One thing you might want to look for, if your engine is cold and your thermostat is all the way, if it's all the way like this, your thermostat is bad or it could be hung up. But if, it, if it's hung like that and it is cold, I'd go ahead and replace it because there's an issue going on. And uh, because this, when this comes forward like this, it opens your choke butterfly up in your carburetor and lets straight air come through when you when your engine is cold it's pulled back right here and your butterfly let me show you on here when your engine is cold your butterfly see it's working your linkage right there when it's cold your butterfly is closed and it's close like this and it's causing it to, it's putting the choke on and allowing to whenever you pull on the cord it's pulling gas through your choke circuit in the carburetor and then when as your motor warms up it opens your choke up to where it's just letting the air through so if yours is just stuck wide open like this and your engine is cold uh, you need to go ahead and just replace that thermostat that might be the reason why your engine's not cranking uh, even after you've rebuilt the carburetor or even if you put a new carburetor on it and still is not cranking over and you know that you have spark uh, pull off your cover and check this out this could be what your issue is so we're going to go through the process of taking this off let me resituate you off Now 
and another way you can check to see if this is working because it could be if you crank your engine up if it's firing right up and it cranks up and it's going or making some type of noise like that and it's just starting to blow out of smoke your choke your choke could be uh, hung up and not opening your butterfly up so when you take all this off if you want to check if your choke is working you can apply heat to it if you have a torch I don't think you could get it hot enough with a lighter you might be able to but I'm going to apply some heat down here and just watch watch right here See it opening. And there you go. Your choke has opened up and now allowing air to come through that opened a little slow this is a used motor that I had that I pulled off the motor that's opening a little slow so when I do put this on another unit I probably I'm gonna go ahead and just put a new one on it should open up a little more faster than that but uh, let's get to taking the muffler off you'll have let's see here I'm gonna do this for y'all There will be three, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> There's gonna be three screws there, five sixteenths. <coughs> One is gonna be right here on the top. Right there on the top. One is gonna be inside this hole right here um, let me see if I can get y'all in there so you can see that I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see that from there see it right up in there point to it with a screwdriver right there and then there's going to be one same thing on this side there's going to be one in there what we need to do is take all three of those off or better yet I only take two off Take the top one off, and it's the five sixteenths. And then you take this one off. Be careful not to lose it, because this holds your heat shield on there to keep you from burning your hand. It still gets hot and can burn you. But I normally, I normally, when I'm in a hurry, just bend this over. But you're going to want to take it off. Let's 
set that to your side. All right. Now you're going to want to take off your two muffler bolts. And those are, the head on those are half inch. And I'm going, I'm letting y'all see where they are there. And I'm going to bring y'all back up. Okay. Get your half sixteenths. I half six half sixteenths. Get your half. Uh, there are there are some tabs on here. I forgot to go over that with y'all. There's some tabs right here that you're gonna want to get your screwdriver underneath or in between your bolt head and there, and you just bend them back like this. Like that. What that does is when you put it back together, you're going to bend those back and it holds your bolt. As they heat and expand and cool off, they tend to want to turn and that tab holds them in place so they don't turn out once you're, once they end. Okay. Take two bolts out. That's what it looks like. If these bolts are hard to turn, do not give it all the strength that you have because you can strip it out and if that bolt breaks off in the head then your muffler is going to be rattling all the time and that thermostat is not going to work right. So what I tend to do is, let's put this back in, what I do is if it's really really hard to turn That bolt has some build up on it, it's not letting my driver go on good. If it has a, if it's really, really hard to turn, you want to turn it just maybe not even a quarter inch. If you can get it to turn just a quarter inch backwards, counterclockwise, like you're going to unscrew it, then stop and then tighten it back up. Then loosen it back again. Just keep doing that, going back and forth until you start to feel it unscrew out a little bit more at a time and you just keep doing that back and forth and every time you go counterclockwise to unscrew it should screw out a little bit further every single time and once you get it out I would say about halfway if it's still kind of hard to screw out screw it all the way back in again to help break up that rust on the bolt on the threads and then unscrew it again until it gets that hard spot. It should break free though. But you do not want that bolt to break off in the head. Especially on these that has this thermostat control choke. Okay. Now these two bolts goes through the muffler, through a gasket, through your thermostat bracket, and through another gasket. Let's see if y'all can see this. off there's your muffler set it to the side there's going to be a gasket on here like so set it to the side 
And then here's your thermostat. And behind it, directly behind it, is going to be another gasket. Set it to your side. Those two gaskets are the same exact gasket. So if you have to order them, I'll give you the part number here in a minute. Okay, now your choke just comes off like this. If you can see, there's a hole in there. A Z bend. You just take it off like that. And there's your thermostat. Okay. Now, the part number for this thermostat, everything comes in this thermostat. You get your linkage cable. Oh, not the cable. You get your linkage rod there. You get your two gaskets and you get the thermostat. The part number, that's the model number off this uh, motor engine sorry um there's your part number for the thermostat seven nine eight nine three eight that comes with your thermostat two gaskets and a linkage rod now if you just want the gaskets they come single you have to buy them one at a time the part number seven nine three four nine seven and if you're going to buy one you might as well replace both of them okay Now we'll go on put everything back together. Everything goes back together exactly the way it came off. Okay. This flat side goes towards your exhaust this not your muffler it comes out your it goes towards your exact exhaust port you gonna want to go ahead and put this back on the z bin goes like this don't put it on like this if you put it on backwards like that of course that's not gonna work so you're gonna want to Put on like this, bend it this way. All right. Get one of your gaskets. It goes between your exhaust port and your thermostat bracket, just like so, on the back side between here and here. Then you got another gasket. It goes on this side. There's a little flange right here, so that kind of can help hold that. Just try to hold them in place where they all line up like this. And what's an easy way to do this? Go ahead and get your muffler. Put your bolts. Put your bolts in your muffler like this. If, you, if you're having a hard time getting it all lined up, you can do it this way. Hold the two bolts in your mouth like this to where they stick out. And while you're holding that in your left or right hand, however, whatever hand you're using, run them through so everything's together like that. And then line your bolts up back in the block at the exhaust port and get them started by hand. And then go back with your ratchet and tighten them up. Just tighten one a little snug. And then tighten the other one a little snug. Make sure you get on there kind of square. It'll have some play in it. Make sure you I like to get mine square and level like this right here. 
get them snug and then tighten them down. Do not over tight. Just get them, use common sense. And now, let's see if I can spin this around. Maybe that'll be better. Now with your hammer and your screwdriver, bend the tabs. Bend them back around that screw, them bolts. There you go. All right, now we're gonna put our heat shroud back on. Put this in in first so it don't get hung up on nothing and then carry it over. Do top screw first just to hold it in place. Don't tighten it down, just screw it in so it can have some play in it because you want some play to be able to get these other screws in. Now, if your ratchet has a magnet in it that can hold the screw, that'll work out really great. If it keeps wanting to fall out, you can go up underneath here and push it through the hole and into the muffler and then get started that way. started don't snug it up yet and then we'll do the other one now that you got them all started go ahead and snug them down now this is this muffler is aluminum so don't snug it too tight it will strip out way faster than them bolts would in that block. Just get it snug. Okay. Now we'll put our cover back on. When you put this on, just like taking it off, if it doesn't want to, if it's binding up and not wanting to go down, just pull this and let go, and it should pop it down in there. And that's it. That's how you that's how you take off your thermostat controlled choke on these ready starts. There's two different types of uh, ready starts um, choke. Um, the way the choke works. Um, this one's thermostat controlled, just by thermostat. There is another model that has an air vane. If any of you know anything about motors, they do have motors that the governor. I believe it is the governor. Yeah, the older ones that's controlled by that. But there is a model out there that has an air vane, and as it blows out, it's controlling your choke. And there's a thermostat over here that opens up and holds your choke open and keeps the vane out. And as it cools, it closes, and, and then, of course, the vein closes again. But this one's just thermostat control. 
But I hope this helped y'all out today. Uh, let me show you one more thing while we got the camera going. But that should fix your issue. If you if you having problems with this cranking, if you, there's two different problems you can have with this cranking. If you've cleaned the carburetor out and it's still not firing up, and you know that you've got every jet clean, everything's good, and you have spark, and it's just taking forever to crank up, or if you happen to start it with ether or spraying something in the carburetor to get it fired up, then your thermostat is your issue on this, most likely. If you cranking it up and it sounds like it's just flooding out and not running right and blowing smoke, your thermostat could be an issue. It could be hung. It could be stuck holding the choke closed and just feeding your motor gas through your choke circuit. That could be another issue. So it being hung either way can cause different issues with this. And especially if you have a new carburetor on there and you know you have spark and you have clean gas with no water in it and it's just not firing at all. And if you spray ether in it and it fires up and it stays running perfectly, then the thermostat's hung wide open, just letting air through and it's not allowing it to close and uh, start pulling gas from your choke circuit on the carburetor. So I hope that helped. Uh, let me show you one more thing before we get off here. I'm going to show you where the model number and everything thing is on this motor. Let me get my flashlight real quick. Most of the time um, on these on these bigger motors is on your valve covers. And they used to stamp your model number and code and code number and everything on the muffler. Well on these let's see here. On these it's right there. Here's the dipstick. Come down and stamp there. The top number, I'm gonna turn you sideways so you can see. The top number is going to be your model and code number. It's going to be your data manufacturer, 32916. Like I said, right there underneath the oil stem. All right, guys, I hope this helped out. And uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more videos soon and helping y'all out along the way. And... Hopefully y'all enjoy my videos. Um, got me a camera stand. I was trying it out today. Might be a little sketchy, but I'll figure it all out. And hopefully can get another camera sometime soon. But hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll talk to you next time. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.